uh, we are going to discuss about autoimmune liver disease and amongst the autoimmune liver disorders most common autoimmune liver disorder is autoimmune hepatitis so autoimmune disorders of the liver right so number one and the most common is autoimmune hepatitis right so number one autoimmune liver disorder is autoimmune hepatitis right autoimmune hepatitis older name is chronic active hepatitis so these are in older time it is used to be called as chronic active hepatitis so chronic active hepatitis is another name of autoimmune hepatitis right so as i said autoimmune hepatitis is the most common autoimmune disorder of the liver right so most common autoimmune hepatitis of liver is autoimmune hepatitis so usually as i said earlier in immunology autoimmune disorders are commonly seen in females and reproductive age group right so mostly females will be affected mostly females will be affected and their age group will be 20 to 50 years right so these autoimmune disorders are associated with so these autoimmune disorders are associated with drugs infection associated with drugs may be due to infections or may be secondary to autoimmune disorders secondary to other autoimmune disorders like sle scleroderma so these are associated with drugs infections and autoimmune disorders what is classical presentation in this patient classically you will find classically so what is the classical finding classical finding in this patient in their serum there will be no antibodies So classically, you will find that there will be a only increase in serum IgG antibodies. So serum IgG antibodies will be raised in their blood and other other markers of viral hepatitis, other markers of viral hepatitis will be normal. So, other markers of viral hepatitis will be within normal limit. So, only serum IgG level will be increased. So, examiner will be asking like this, a female patient, only IgG was raised, all other marker of the serum hepatitis or all other marker of the viral hepatitis will be absent. So, you have to think about the autoimmune hepatitis, right. In autoimmune hepatitis, on the basis of serological examination, there are three types of autoimmune hepatitis, right? So now we can see that there are three types of autoimmune hepatitis based on antibodies. So type 1, type 2 and type 3 autoimmune hepatitis. Type 1 autoimmune hepatitis, they will be having three important antibodies. So type 1 autoimmune hepatitis, they will be having number 1 is smooth muscle actin this is called antibodies against smooth muscle actin smooth muscle actin autoantibodies second antibodies which we will see in type 1 is the anti nuclear antibodies so second is anti nuclear antibodies and third is liver pancreas or soluble liver antigen liver pancreas or soluble liver antigen so these are the antibodies which will be present in the type 1 autoimmune hepatitis so type 1 autoimmune hepatitis is smooth muscle actin anti nuclear antibodies liver pancreas or smooth or soluble liver antigen antibodies will be present right so these are the important things and remember out of these this is the most common and smooth muscle actin is its most specific type of antibodies for type 1 autoimmune hepatitis. Type 2 autoimmune hepatitis, what is characteristic? They are not associated with anti-nuclear antibodies. So that is number one point, not associated with anti-nuclear antibodies and they are associated with liver kidney microsomal antibodies, right? So they are associated with liver kidney 
microsomal antibodies. So liver kidney microsomal antibodies will be present in type 2 hepatitis. Right. So this type 2 autoimmune hepatitis liver kidney microsome they will be divided into three categories on the basis of their association. So when they are associated with hepatitis C virus infection these are called as type 1 LKM antibodies. So this will be called as LKM1 antibodies. So LKM1 antibodies are associated with hepatitis C infection. So this is the number 1. Right. Second is anti-LKM2 antibodies. LKM2 antibodies are associated with drugs. Right. Third is anti-LKM3 antibodies. LKM3 antibodies are formed in hepatitis. So they are associated with hepatitis D infection. So hepatitis D infection is associated with LKM3, right? So now you can see that liver kidney microsome antibodies, which we are seeing in liver pathology is LKM1 for hepatitis C, LKM2 for hepatitis drugs and LKM3 is for hepatitis D, right? Third category of autoimmune hepatitis, type 3 autoimmune hepatitis, they are characteristically not associated with anti-nuclear antibodies or LKM antibodies. They are not associated with anti-nuclear antibodies or LKM antibodies. They will be having association with soluble liver antigen antibodies. Soluble liver antigen antibodies, right? So these are important point about the type 3 autoimmune hepatitis. So now we can see autoimmune hepatitis on the basis of antibodies. There are three types, type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 2, it is important to notice that these three types of antibodies which we are seeing here, LKM antibodies for hepatitis C, LKM2 antibodies against drugs and LKM3 antibodies against hepatitis D infection, right? So these are important point about autoimmune hepatitis. When we see uh, serology, as I said, when you are seeing the serological examination, you will be finding only IgG antibodies are raised, that's all, right? And when you are seeing biopsy of autoimmune hepatitis, there are three characteristic findings. So in biopsy of autoimmune hepatitis, there are three characteristic findings you will be observing. What are these three things? Number one, we will be having interface hepatitis. They will be having interface hepatitis. This interface hepatitis is also known as piecemeal necrosis. This is also called as piecemeal necrosis. So, piecemeal necrosis or interface hepatitis, number one, biopsy finding. Second biopsy finding, you will be finding hepatic rosettes. Hepatic rosettes. And third is imperipolysis. Imperipolysis, right? So, lymphocytic cell having imperipolysis, right? So, these are the three important histological findings of the autoimmune hepatitis, interface hepatitis. What is the meaning of interface hepatitis? Already we have discussed, right? So, just I am going to revise you quickly. When we are seeing, this is the triad, this is the central vein and these are the portal tract, right? So, these are the portal tract. So, when you find a single layer of hepatocyte that is called as limiting plate, so what we have learned that whenever these lymphocytic infiltrates are causing damage of the limiting plate and they are moving towards the central vein or pericentral area that will be called as interface hepatitis or piecemeal necrosis, right? So that is what we are calling piecemeal necrosis. Limiting plate is getting damaged. Limiting plate is getting damaged. Damaged by lymphocytic infiltrate, right? So, lymphocytic infiltrates will be damaging the lim limiting plate. So, that will be considered as interface hepatitis or piecemeal necrosis. In hepatic rosettes, you will be finding uh, there is a central part and they will be surrounded by hepatocyte like this. So, that is called as hepatic rosettes, right? So, there will be a lumen or there will be a central part. There will be a central part and they will be surrounded by hepatocytic cells. These are called as central or hepatic rosettes, right? Imperipolysis, we all know that when there is an active penetration of one cell into another cell. So, you will be finding a cell 
with their nucleus right cell with their nucleus and after that there will be entry of another cell so when you will be seeing histopathology there will be entry of another cell and their nucleus will be closer to them so you will be seeing two nucleus in the cell that is called active penetration of one cell into another cell is called imperipolysis so these are the three characteristic features these are the three characteristic biopsy finding of the autoimmune hepatitis what are these three things interface hepatitis hepatic rosette formation and imperipolysis right which i am going to show you in this diagram so now you can see that this is the autoimmune hepatitis this is the autoimmune hepatitis where we can see there is a portal tract so this is the duct this is the area and now you can see entire thing has been occupied by lymphocytic infiltrate they are causing the damage of the limiting plate so this is called interface hepatitis small lymphocytic infiltrates they are causing damage around the periportal area and there there is a damage of the hepatocyte and now they are moving towards the pericentral area this is called as interface hepatitis right this one if you look at this picture you can see there is a central part and then they are surrounded by the hepatocytic cells they are surrounded by the hepatocytic cells so these are the hepatic rosettes so this one is called hepatic rosette you can see there is a central part and these are hepatocytes these are hepatocytes and this is called hepatic rosette so now this is a hepatic rosette there is another hepatic rosette there is a hepatic rosette right so these are hepatic rosettes which we are seeing in autoimmune hepatitis now look at this one in this picture you can see how a cell is a cell is having engulf in penetration of one cell second cell right so these are the two cells right in this cell this is called rosette formation you can see here also there is a there is a cell and cell within cell this is called imperipolysis so these are the three diagnostic finding of the autoimmune hepatitis